Yeah, I'm just uh, just answering a question I got. Um, let me just make sure I'm recording. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this guy here, uh, Lukin, had a problem with the clip curve. And I think what is going on basically? Uh, the problem was that he said he was uh, trying to clip on the left side and it was pushing everything to the right. Um, the thing about the clipping tool. Uh, let me just draw something out. I'll, I'll just go over cube. Uh, press T. Press poly mesh to make it uh, active and 3D and stuff. Uh, I'm just going to divide that a few times so I've got a little bit more resolution in there. And I'm going to do Takaki uh, brush clipping curve and press uh, skip note BCC. So I've now, when I press uh, Control Shift, I can uh, pull out this line. Uh, and I think what you're doing, Lukin, is that when you try to clip something, you might be drawing it this way. So the actual gradient is facing towards the model. Uh, the thing about the clipping brush is that the part that you want to be uh, clipped has to be sort of um, the gradient has to be facing away like if you notice now where this gradient is and that sort of uh, corner of this cube is inside that gradient area that is the area that's going to be clipped um, so it's just probably uh, pay a bit more attention to how uh, you like you drawing the curve out like if I was to draw it this way it would you know get rid of everything but once you're used to that, you'll kind of get used to it, and um, you won't you you won't even think about it. You know, it's just getting used to the initial. You know, to clip from the left, you've got to draw it upwards, and then from the right, draw it downwards. Uh, yeah, it's just. That's, I think that's right. I think that's probably what you're doing. Um, but if not, just describe it a little bit better, and I'll try and help you out with that as well. But yeah, I I want to talk about that actually as well. May as well since I'm doing this video. Um, if you're using the Eclipse Circle, doesn't matter if it's the uh, clip that one or this one. Um, the only difference is that if you draw out the uh, the Eclipse Circle center, is that it stays a perfect circle. Um, well, it doesn't. Well, okay, okay, I explain that wrong. If you're using the Eclipse Circle center, it draws it out and it scales out from the uh, the center point of the circle. If you wanted to make the um, the circle not constrained to um, you know a perfect circle you can simply turn off this square button here which is under the mask it's not under the actual brush um, because um, the actual brush is using this uh, circle alpha here to make it a circle uh, and assume that if you put it as a rectangle it's going to draw as a rectangle there you go um, so we just put that circle again if I turn off square what square does it basically constrains the um, constrains the proportions of the uh, the actual alpha so if I turn that off Press there to get that back. You can now um, make the uh, the circle all nice and weird. Um, but I'm just gonna keep it as a square. Okay, clip circle is kind of cool. Um, it's really kind of specific in terms of getting things out of it. But basically, when you first draw it out, just using Control Shift, it's gonna be uh, in this white state. And if you to move it around, just hold uh, the space bar. Once you press the space. Uh, it's not going to scale it anymore, it's going to actually move it around. Uh, and when it's in this white state, anything inside the circle um, is going to be cl is um, going to be safe, it's sort of like a safe zone. Like if I hold it there, it's going to constrain everything to that circle and push it like this. Uh, if I do this again, but uh, this time when I move it around and I hold Alt, uh, you'll notice it goes black. And that's going to get rid of everything. However, you have to make sure that uh, when you're clipping um, in this black state that the uh, little center point that little cross is not on the mesh if it's on the mesh like this it's just going to go all crazy and stuff but this can be cool if you try to make some sort of weird like brackets like um if i just line this up right and i wanted to make like some sort of cool bracket for like a screw or something you know you can actually do that um it works a little bit better a bit more res um if i just dynamesh that to show you better illustrate this uh, let's dynamesh this, press uh, yes, uh, let me just delete that, uh, delete the history there so it's not taking the uh, the dynamesh information from subdivision 1, always delete history when you're using dynamesh, and you'll get this result here, I'm going to uh, subdivide that once more using control D, and let's just try that again, uh, let's just line it up so this is like um, kind of flat to the camera, and I'm going to make sure the center point is on the mesh, and I'm going to hold alt, let that go, and you can just get like these really cool effects like that's some sort of awesome like bracket and you can just I don't know put some like uh, screw head subtools in there um, but it's just something to be aware of you know if you want to make like a 
like some sort of like um, like cavity in there. You got to make sure that the center point is outside of the the mesh, and you will get the uh, that sort of piece cut into there. Just something to be aware of if you're thinking, well, why is this doing this? And it's just you know the center point thing, like so. But it's just really, I don't know, you can really play around with the clip brushes and you can get some really sort of funky results like that, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just something that you could never really sculpt using the brushes, you know, it's always um, sort of just weird results. Like you could never actually sculpt that and make it look that cool, like some sort of side bracket. Uh, a common use for this, I'll show you, you've probably seen this in a few models, let me just get rid of this. Um, if I go to a uh, sphere, I just draw it out, hit T, make polymesh 3D. Uh, I'm just going to press uh, B, S, R to get my uh, select rectangle. Uh, I'm just going to delete the bottom half of this, like so. Right, I'm going to press uh, delete hidden, and I'm going to close the holes to close that up there. I'm actually going to get rid of a bit more like that, just to uh, get point past the, uh, the center point there. And I'm just going to delete the hidden, close the holes, and I'm going to dynamesh this. Okay, and I'm left with this sort of semicircle, okay? Now, because this is in the middle of my uh, object, I'm going to go up here to my transform. I'm going to activate the symmetry or pressing X on the keyboard when I'm here. You'll notice uh, if you see this little cursor there switching on and off, that's just pressing X. Uh, but I'm going to use something here called radial symmetry. I'm going to turn that on, I'm going to check it out, and that's not the correct axes. I think the axes we want is probably, uh, I think, Y. Nope, it's Z. And there you go. Okay, now we've got this cool um, radialness which is covering the, this, the top of this uh, semi sphere here. Uh, I'm just going to use the clipping uh, rectangle, uh, not rectangle, the clipping uh, cer yeah, clip circle. And I'm going to hit this and I'm going to come here, hold Alt to go to black mode, and you can get like these really sort of cool like caps. And I've seen this done so many times now. Uh, they'll have like some screw heads in there and they'll just cap stuff off you know like if I just go that and you know I can get some of this going on uh, and maybe I want to sort of uh, get like a uh, mask circle on here and I'm just going to hit these two buttons here so I have the similar um, functionality of the center so I can draw this out and then you know just line it up like so and I'm just going to mask in there like this and I'm going to control click on the outside to invert that mask and what I'm going to do now is a transpose tool and I'm just going to draw this out like so and you hold shift to snap to a grid uh, not sorry a grid um, just uh, to snap it to position you can snap it into different sort of things I'm just trying to line it up so it's perfectly straight off there okay and I'm going to hold down shift whilst clicking the middle of this transpose tool uh, first of all, actually, I just didn't notice that I've got this masked up on the inside as well. I'm just going to uh, mask out this bottom bit as well, like so. Uh, and holding shift here is going to constrain um, my brush to the axes, so I can pull this in, like so. Uh, you, know, you can just get all these really awesomely cool shapes, you know. Um, I'm just going to go back to the clipping circle here. Uh, I'm going to actually turn up the radial count. Uh, maybe hit X again. The radio count is 8 at the minute, I'm going to talk to 16, uh, so we have twice as many here. I'm going to try to keep to the center very roughly, and I'm just going to draw another piece like that. And you can just build up all this awesome sort of detail just using uh, the clipping brushes in specific ways. Uh, so I'm sort of throwing that out there. Uh, it's a kind of mini tutorial and answering someone's question. I hope you found this useful, Luke, in, and I hope this solved your problem. There you go.